Hi, today we're uh, with John Peters from Peters Farm Supply, LLC out of uh, Emmett. And John, what do we got here? Uh, we have a Horse Anderson high speed compact disc. Um, typically you run this machine between 8 and 12 miles per hour, depending on field conditions. Uh, it moves the whole sole profile to the right, or to the left I should say, then back to the right. And when it does that, it fills this rolling spring roller up with dirt, tumbles it around, throws it back out, puts the fines down last and the course down first, so you have a nice two inch seed bed to plant in. Okay. Um, it typically runs, like I said, between 8 and 12 miles per hour. This is heavy, this is wheat stubble here, two pass system, it'll be ready to plant. Um, what depth that? can you run it? Uh, you can run it anywhere between, uh, probably like about six inches, about as deep as it can go. Um, this machine here has 8,500 acres on it. Um, it starts with a 20 inch notch blade. Notch blade is good for agitation of the residue. It doesn't ball up, it, it pulls it through, agitates it through. Um, has real good mixing action. You'll see the residue anywhere between, oh, I would say that five inch soil profile, it's mixed in almost perfectly. There's not a lot of roping. There's not a, uh, a lot of fluff on top of the ground to keep the air and the sunlight from getting into the soil. Uh, it does a real good job of drying the ground out. Typically, you can go through the ground about a day sooner than you could with a conventional tillage machine um, because it doesn't pack the ground down as it goes through the ground. It basically has got a lifting action. It lifts everything up. Each uh, process lifts it again, puts it back down. The last one, nice big fluff on the back. And it's got the fine soil to seal the ground off so it doesn't uh, air out too much. It's just it's a perfect uh, seed bed tool. Okay, let's see her in action. Okay. Tractor's running. Hit the power button. It's on. Uh, make sure the fourth remote's in float because it's got a uh, drain case return. So I just use the number four remote, plug it in, put it on float. So let's put it on float. Then cycle it up, up one time. And cycle it back down. It's got a seven second detent. So that's what you're doing. Now it's leveling itself off. It's, it's uh, getting the front and back in sync. Uh, it has an offset on the hitch, which means you can make the front blades go deeper or shallower than the back to get it to pull uh, straight down the field. So, um, usually I cycle it twice. Now you should be good to go. Always pick up on the headlands because you're not going to slide the displays. They won't slide. So you need to pick it up on the headlands. Okay, we're pulling it with a 9560R. Uh, it has hydraulic down pressure on the wings to the cylinders. It has a, an accumulator. So typically you'll run about three or 400 PSI on. It's plenty to keep your wings in the ground. Take some of the weight off the mainframe. I was talking about where it segregates the soil, the fine comes out to the top and the course goes down below. Typically what you do on a two-pass system is you'd work the field, 
then come back to the beginning and work it the second time, giving it about an hour or so in between passes. Okay. That really does a nice job breaking the soil up. depth on the display here on the second pass. So what we're trying to achieve is a perfect seed bed for the to plant into. And so first set of disc blades throws it in the second set of disc blades and you got that nice mixing action going on. The key to this machine why it is such a good seed bed preparation tool is because the length of the machine is not very long. So you don't have the front gouging versus the back maybe riding out of the ground like you would with an offset disc uh, setup. And then this one here, it has this rolling basket in the back. As it loads up the dirt in the basket, it beats it up against the dirt against dirt, dirt against steel, then it throws it back across the back. Then if you go back here, you can see the residue mix. First pass, I was doing about five inches. In the second pass, I was doing about three. So if you grab the soil profile and you pick it up, you'll find residue all the way through it. 
so you don't have a lot of fluff on top to mess it up in the spring when you want it to dry out get some sun to it get some air to it it can do that plus you still have enough residue to hold the soil okay for erosion purposes now you you mentioned about uh, maintenance um, the springs are pretty maintenance free other than the fact that if you were to hit a rock right in the center of the spring I think there's a couple on here that probably could be looking at changing going on the other side here Here's one right here. So you must have hit a rock pretty good right here. Now all it merely did is increase the, the distance between the spoke and the spring. So now it's going to go up and down a little bit more than it's designed to do. And okay. You'll get a little stress crack in here and you'll break this off. But it gives you more than enough time to go through and change these here in the morning. If you had a couple that were like that, you could change them out. So it's pretty maintenance free. And it doesn't stop the machine from working. It still does an aggressive job with the soil, even if one was missing. But uh, uh, that's the key to this machine, why it works so well. It's got this four and a half inch gap, then a three inch leaf spring, then a four and a half inch gap. So that front set of, or that back set of disc blades can load that thing right up. As the dirt's coming in on an angle, it fills it right up with dirt nice. Right about the eight and a half, nine mile an hour. Okay. And it's made in Andover, South Dakota. And it's uh, all built in the United States with the exception of the leaf spring that's made in Germany. And the oil filled bearing that holds the disc plate on, that's made in Germany. And the rubber torsion bars to get your spring action on your teeth, on your disc plate. They have the four rubbers on your torsion bar arm that allows it to move up and down. Okay, if you hit a, hit a rock with it, how do you reset it? It doesn't reset. It has about five and a half inches of travel, so when it hits a rock, it wants to go back and up that five and a half inches, and it's it's a nice of enough shock that doesn't harm the blades or the bearings. Um, these blades here have uh, 8,500 acres on them, and we never had a crack blade or a bet blade on it, so it, it's really a maintenance-free machine. Um, we like it a lot. It's been through a lot of rocks, and it still held up very well. Well, thanks, John. Appreciate the tour of the machine. And if you, anybody locally here interested, what's a good number to get a hold of you? Uh, phone number you can get a hold of is 810-841-5403. Thanks.